Ta ne. What's up guys? So we just got the S2000 home and that was a whole debacle because uh, about seven miles from home I ended up getting a big blowout. The tire shredded, took out part of the rear bumper, uh, waited for an hour, had to call Amber so I could borrow the jack from the Jeep and then had to call a friend that I knew with the Honda so I could borrow his spare from, a, from his HRV. Swapped the tire, got it home and as you can see the car is in really rough shape. I'll show you guys in a bit like the details of that. Okay, so the front bumper is temporarily plasti dipped red because I didn't want it looking too janky bringing it uh, to the shop or back home. And then as you can see here, my hood is extraordinarily faded. The clear coat is obliterated. The, uh, the vents that I cut out, are <laughs> two of the grills are missing and the edges are really rough. Um, it's, I did put new headlights in it, so those are looking decent. And let's see, moving on. This fender's all sorts of scratched up. I don't know if, let's see, we can get that scratch right there. Yep, there it is. Okay. Uh, my side skirt's falling off. Yep. Uh, this crappy carbon wrap I did on the side view mirrors is all bubbled. My seats have faded pretty quickly for some reason. Uh, let's see. Oh, yeah. Windshield's cracked. I do have a pair of Jay's wide-body front fenders up here, though. They're in also rough shape, but we'll see what we can do with those. Um, yeah, let's pop this hood. Alright, so there's an upgraded radiator, a K&N cold air intake, a strut tower bar, uh, it's got brand new coil packs, uh, new spark plugs, new hardware. Uh, it also has Supertech titanium dual valve springs and retainers. And then the new block I got sleeved with Darton sleeves. It's also got ARP head studs as well. Uh, so yeah, it's ready to make and hold a ton of power. Uh, I just can't figure out why it's not running right. Uh, I've, got, I've changed the map sensor like three times now. I think I changed the IAC valve twice. You can also see this is a new throttle body as well with the new TPS sensor. There's that beautiful spare HRV wheel that I had to borrow. My soft top is all sorts of messed up. You won't be able to really tell here, but it is really, it's in really sad shape. 
Also have the APR rear spoiler, also in really rough shape. I attempted to hide some of those blemishes by wrapping the center of the spoiler, but you can see there's a lot of bubbles, cracks, and like deformations in it. Oh, this is one of my favorite parts of the car, uh, is the rear taillights. They're the depot taillights. They're amazing. They look beautiful. Um, yeah, they, they'll really, really stand out once the car is completed. There's the spoon rear diffuser with the NVIDIA N1 exhaust. You can see the diffuser is a little cracked. There's my shredded tire from bringing it home. So yeah, I think that's about, about it on the S. I would love to see this thing back to its former glory. Hopefully we can make that happen sometime soon. And here's the LS1 that I could put in the S. I think they make something like 325, 350 horsepower. Somewhat equal foot pounds of torque as well. And from what I've read, they don't really add too much weight to the S2000 overall. The engine would sit pretty far back just like it is right now. I, I think it only adds maybe 100 pounds up front and, the, and that's really not that bad. So for the past, the past few months, it was at a friend's shop because he was trying to diag it after I rebuilt the engine. Um, I rebuilt the engine with a new block, sleeved the block, a whole lot of awesome new parts in it. And for some reason it was just not running right and I can't figure out why, neither could he. Um, I had to rebuild the engine because I blew the stock motor because I hydro locked it, blew a cylinder open uh, because I was an idiot and I drove it through like a small flooded area during a big rainstorm. So some backstory on my journey with the S2000. It was back in like 2001. Um, I was about maybe nine years old and I remember I was sitting in my dad's office. Um, he was a car sales manager of a Ford at that time. And I was on his laptop and one of his friends brought in a bootleg version of, of course, Fast and Furious Part 1. Um, so I must have watched that thing on like a loop day after day and of course I fell in love with Johnny Trans S2000. I remember loving the whole Too Soon Junior, the whole he's got more than 100 grand out of the hood of that car thing, right? Um, so when the time finally came, I was 18 years old, I was, I was ready to buy my first car. I was a young, dumb boot in the Marine Corps, probably like an E2, probably a first class. And of course, now that I had the money, I did the boot thing and I bought a sports car. I think at the time my insurance was more than my car payment. Um, pretty, probably a pretty dumb move, but it was the S2000 and I had to have it, right? Um, throughout my time in the DC area, I joined the Mid-Atlantic S2000 community, uh, went to plenty of meets, plenty of drives along Skyline Drive and in the Shenandoah Valleys, and I really, really, really enjoyed my time with the S2000 and uh, sadly, uh, uh, over the years, I, I didn't really maintain it the way it deserves and eventually um, back in 2017 it's a funny story because I was on my way or I went to Pep Boys to buy like cleaning supplies and polish, wax, new paint for the wheels. I was going to like try to bring it back to life, restore it as best as I could at the time. And on my way back from Pep Boys a huge storm hit and on my way into the neighborhood I drove it into like a small flooded area and being that the cold air intake was routed to the bottom of the front bumper. It sucked up enough water to blow a cylinder open and the car ended up sitting for a year after that. Um, but eventually I started buying all the parts that were going into this rebuild that we've done here and it's just a matter of time now before you either figure this engine out or we do that LS swap. So yeah, go going forward I'm not exactly sure what I want to do with the car. I mean I do have the SS back there that has that LS1 that, that would be ideal to swap into the S. I would need to buy a T56 and then I would also need to buy the swap kit as well. Um, but I'm also interested in, in, in maybe figuring out what's wrong with this F20 because I, I, it's got good compression, the timing's right, um, I do have an AEM standalone ready to be installed if I need to. Um, I do need to check fuel pressure, see if that's if there's anything wrong with that, and if, the, and if it's fine, I really don't know what else could be wrong with it. Um, the car for, okay, so the car doesn't like to go above 5,000 RPM at like around the VTEC crossover area, it just kind of hits a wall and, and doesn't want to accelerate. Also it lacks throttle response, it stalls out at idle, 
and it just runs strange. Like the engine sounds healthy, the compression's great, um, but it just I don't know. I don't know what's up with it. Uh, I would. I'm, I'm interested in figuring it out because I, I mean it's the F20C. It's one of the best Honda engines ever made. So it, it it's almost sacrilegious to take a Chevy block and or a, a Chevy engine and swap it into the S. Um, despite how cool it is, how much torque you make, and and you know. So yeah, let me know in the comments what you guys think I should do, whether I should do the LS swap or keep the F20C. Um, either way, it's, it's, an, it's an amazing car. I'm just really looking forward to its transformation over maybe like the next year or so, no matter which way we go with it, whether the LS or the F20, it's, it's gonna be really fun rebuilding it, making it the great car that it was back when I bought it in 2011. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you.